Hello, Bishop William Johnson coming to you from St. Ambrose Cathedral. A hint of chill in the air in the morning signals that we've entered the fall season. So favored by so many of us. Obviously, our farmers already out combining beans and looking to harvest the corn as well. But we always look to bring forth a spiritual harvest of great grace in our day in, day out lives. I rise every morning giving thanks to God for being alive and for the faith with which he's entrusted to me, not only for my personal salvation, but to share that with others as your shepherd. We approach the second anniversary of my ordination and installation as the 10th Bishop of Des Moines. I am so filled with gratitude. Whatever challenges might occur in the course of a day or throughout this pandemic time, to be able to collaborate in the vineyard of the Lord, working with you, hopefully building you up in strength and hope, and calling forth that spirit of humility, poverty of spirit, that as the anniversary date is the Feast of St. Vincent de Paul, that he who was so his heart turned always to the poor, that he himself embodied that in a way that I think gives us most, one of the strongest signal notes of our church as well. When uh, St. Vincent de Paul was counseling some of the members of his community, he said that not every thought we have, not every inclination, which might appear to be good, comes from God. We have to be look at things carefully, have recourse to God in prayer, and ask for his light, reflecting on our motives, purposes, and means, to seeing if they're in accord with his good pleasure, and then always talking over our ideas with prudent persons, taking the advice of those placed with us and over us who are treasuries of wisdom and of the grace of God. And I think that exercise of the challenges we face to uphold the common good, to protect one another, certainly in the decisions that we make, and the decisions that obviously, as we try to be citizens of the state, but ultimately, it is our identity as citizens of the kingdom, which takes precedence for us as well. And so we know that the challenges that are faced to comply with state law and the messages with regard to mass that we received, uh, so such intensity on both sides, but hopefully charity always prevailing, even as we've experienced frustration that I too have shared in. At this point in this pandemic, we can be discouraged for a myriad of reasons. The apparent lack of concern for the most vulnerable or disagreements about mitigation strategies or exasperation that the pandemic continues to endure and we have not uh, overcome yet. But our faith calls us to rise above our individual dispositions, to continue to make sacrifices for the sake of the common good, to serve the most vulnerable among us, and to witness to the intrinsic value of every human life. And so the policies in consultation with wise and prudent persons in the medical, the pastoral, and the legal fields as well, but overall, the pastoral care of, of, of our sheep, of the flock which we are in the Diocese of Des Moines. So we are committed to helping slow the spread of COVID-19, to being transparent in our reporting of cases and our policies, and to continue to provide a formative environment in worship, in our schools, in our way of being in community that will draw together people of goodwill so that we can transcend perhaps some of our disagreements about practical decisions that are made. St. Gregory the Gate, whose pastoral care I cited on the vigil night before my ordination, his uh, pastoral care document speaks about the way in which authority has to make these decisions among competing partial goods, but ultimately for the sake of our good of faith, our chance to build up communion with God, and to be also citizens in the world who take our place for the benefit of our neighbor who might not yet know Christ. And so navigating this pandemic has been painful and difficult for us all. We have to acknowledge that. But within these is our challenges to give witness to the world in charity and unity and solicitude for our neighbor. That's my heart for prayer and as I give thanks and we move into another year of service to the Diocese of Des Moines I continue to rely on your prayers thank you for the graces that you help mediate to me may we continue to, to lift each other up in the name of the Lord Jesus